Distillers malt. That's obviously what you should use when making a wash or a mash to distill, right? Well... How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Okay, here's the deal guys. Distillers malt sucks. Unless it doesn't, in which case it's awesome. And what I mean by that is, depends on the situation, guys. There is a very specific use case for distiller's malt, and if you're not using it for that situation, you're missing out. So let's back up a little bit before we get too carried away here, and I really want to point out right away that when you say distiller's malt, people could actually mean one of two different things, depending on what they use it for or probably where they're from. Number one. American distiller's malt, and it's designed primarily or specifically to be used with adjuncts. So, you know, most of the time, corn. Number two, what these Scots use to make scotch, and that is made to make single malt whiskey. So, before we start talking about the specifications of these malts and how they differ on paper, and then sort of the, the use cases as well, let's talk about the actual process. What happens between, you know, dirt, and it goes into a mash tun to sort of give these two different products. Now, there's a whole host, a whole host of variables here that I am not an expert in, guys. I'm gonna tell you right now. We do have a couple of people that are kicking around this place um, that could give you all the information you could ever possibly want and then still talk for another four hours about the stuff and give you great information. If those guys are around, I'm sure you'll see them in the comments. The obvious first thing is different seed stock, right? Like different literally different strains of barley that can be used to give different characteristics down the way. Six row used to be used a lot for distiller's malt in America because it provided a much higher diastatic power or potential diastatic power later on down the track. Now two rows just taking over, two rows caught up to six row. Uh, six row can be a pain in the ass and it's kind of being phased out. So if you hear people talking about six row as distillers, you don't need six row anymore. You can get a two row version of the six row. <laughs> Does that make sense? The next major difference is during germination. So an American distiller's malt is germinated to promote high enzymes at the cost of pretty much everything else. Whereas a Scottish or a European distiller's malt is germinated to promote extraction potential above just about everything else. Next, we have the kilning. Now, both of these malts are gonna be kilned very lowly compared to other things, but especially the American distiller's malt is gonna be kilned uh, super low to prevent any of those enzymes denaturing, and once again, give you as much potential conversion power as possible, or diastatic power. As you can see, the distiller's malt is super high in diastatic power, the enzyme packet that it brings to the table when you mash, so that is great for converting other things that you throw into the wash. Now, if your wash is 100% barley, you don't need all those enzymes. What the Scots are looking for is more sugar. The only thing, the only thing they're putting into single malt is malted barley. So they don't need this crazy high diastatic power. And when it comes to creating these malts, diastatic power and extract potential are somewhat inversely proportional to each other. Neither of these products are created with a single iota. They don't give a shit about flavor. That's not what their purpose is. One is to make a buttload of sugar and the other is to be able to convert a buttload of stuff to make sugar. And this is why I'm saying distiller's malt sucks. I've seen so many people fall into the trap of using one or the other in completely the wrong scenario. So if you're trying to make a single malt and you're using American distiller's malt, you're losing out on a whole lot of flavor compared to, you know, just using a brewing malt, like a ale malt or a pilsner malt, or heck, even mixing in some Munich or Vienna or something like that for some toastiness or roastiness. You're leaving all the flavor behind and you're not even getting that much sugar. And conversely, if you're using the Scottish version of the Stiller's malt to make a bourbon with, you've got one or two options. One is you use the same amount of malt that you would use if you're using an American Distiller's malt, in which case 
you probably won't get full conversion because you've only got half, literally half the amount of enzymes going into that wash most likely. Or you can double the amount of barley that you're using to corn and then lose out on corn flavor or that extra part of the grist that you've donated to barley, relatively flavorless barley, could have been used for wheat or rye or specialty corn. Does distiller's malt suck? Hell yes it sucks, if you're using it for the wrong job. Now, I, I do have to admit that yes, I think there is a place for American distiller's malt if you don't want to use bottled enzymes. It allows you to use barley to get the enzymes into the wash and then get the hell out of the way. It's not contributing a hell lot of flavor, but more importantly, it allows you to put more of the stuff that you want to put into the wash, into the wash. More corn, more wheat, more rye, whatever it happens to be. I don't know guys, here's the thing. The Scots make damn fine single malt whiskey. Like, amazing stuff, I love it. But, but, I think they could make better single malt if they were using essentially ale malts, brewing malts, pilsner malts, whatever they happen to be that gives up just a little bit, just a little bit of that extract potential for the sake of flavor. <laughs> so I know I missed a video at the beginning of this week. This video is here to make up for it now and I will be seeing you tomorrow for the main still it video as well. So if you like the video and you think it was interesting, hit the like button down below. If you think other people can benefit from this little discussion, please share it with them. That helps me out a bunch. Keep on chasing the craft and I'll see you tomorrow. See ya.